Hi, hello, and welcome back. So we are continuing with 2.3 in animal tissues, and in this one, we are focusing on muscles. So let's have a look at the learning outcomes. This is where we are. We are going to focus on these three types. Okay, this is where we are on the mind map, and we're focusing here. Okay. So as you can see from this very handsome creature right here, that we are going to look at three types of muscles, which is the smooth, the skeletal muscles, and the cardiac muscles. I think this is not a foreign topic to you. Like, it's not too weird to think about muscles. So we're going to jump right in. The first one is something you're already familiar with because you probably learned this in school, which is the smooth muscle. So smooth muscle is a spindle-shaped cell with tapering ends. Tapering ends maksudnya pada hujung sel dia, dia tajam, memuncung macam ni. There is a single cell per nucleus. The nucleus is at the center. And there is a lack of striation. So tiada belang-belang pada smooth muscle. The function of smooth muscle is, of course, for movement, but specifically for involuntary action such as propelling food through your gastrointestinal tract or easier if you just say peristalsis so yeah it's involuntary actions things that you don't have to think to do and peristalsis is something that you should remember it's something your body does from your mouth to your stomach to your small intestine, your large intestines, and out the other end. Pergerakan um, makanan, bahan-bahan dalam badan kita, banyak menggunakan peristalsis. So just try to understand what that word is, and hopefully use it efficiently when needed. So I talked about food going down your throat and out your bum. Uh, we, that we can relate that to where we can find smooth muscles. So distribution of smooth muscles is mainly at the wall of your digestive tract. So saluran pemakanan kamu memang akan ada smooth muscle. You will also find smooth muscle in your urinary bladder, pundi kencing, arteries, saluran darah kamu, the iris of your eyes. So for this part, you can look at yourself in the mirror you notice that when your pupil enlarges or shrinks, that is thanks to the smooth muscles that you have in your eyes. You can also find smooth muscles in the lining of the uterus and also at the erector muscles. Okay, so we'll just have a quick drawing of what smooth muscles look like. Fairly simple, nothing complicated. Here I'm drawing about five cells just to show you how it looks together. And then I label the nucleus. And then we move on to the next type of muscle. So this next one is skeletal, skeletal, macam mana lah kamu mau sebutkan, asalkan ejaan betul, and or also called striated muscle. So the shape of this muscle cell is they are elongated, cylindrical, unbranched fibers. So dia bentuk silinder yang memanjang dan dia tidak bercabang. That's what it means. Okay, so it's cylindrical shape. In one muscle cell, one skeletal muscle cell, you can have many nucleus. But the nucleus will not be in the center. It will be at the periphery. Periphery maksud dia di tepi-tepi. And it will have striations. Striations means belang-belang. Macam kamu boleh tengok dalam diagram ni, dia ada dia punya belang-belang. Dia ada light and dark band. Ada part yang terang, ada part yang gelap. So those are the striations on your skeletal muscle. The striation is because of overlapping actin and myosin filaments. I think for that part, you might have covered it in school before. You can Google it or you can wait until next semester to learn about what is actin and myosin filaments. Okay, and that is pretty much it for the structure of the striated muscle and the function of it is to be attached to bones and the skeletal muscles are responsible for voluntary movement of skeleton. Elok kalau kamu boleh cakap voluntary movement of skeleton. Sebab ini adalah pergerakan yang kita perlu fikir untuk buat. So like moving your arms, moving your legs, moving your head side to side. 
it is all because of your skeletal muscles. And distribution is they will be attached to your skeleton or bones. Di mana kamu boleh jumpa skeletal muscle? Bersambung dengan skeleton. Itu saja. Okay, so let us try to draw the skeletal muscles. So in here, I'm drawing a few. Remember that they are cylindrical shape. They are unbranched, so they lurus saja dan dia ada belang. It has striations. And then I'm going to draw the nucleus at the periphery. Itu saja. And that is how you draw the skeletal muscles. Okay, third type of muscle, which is the cardiac muscle. Cardiac, anything with the word cardiac is referring to your heart. So, that what is the shape or structure of your cardiac muscle? Your cardiac muscles are elongated cylindrical branched fibers interconnected via intercalated disc. Dia bentuk silinder, silinder yang panjang, elongated, branched, means dia bercabang, Interconnected via intercalated disc means dia bersambung antara satu sama lain disambung dengan intercalated disc. Dalam gambar raja ini, kalau kamu boleh tengok, ada part yang dia macam gelap sikit kan warna pink dia tu yang lurus begitu. Ah, That is your intercalated disc. Each cardiac muscle cell can have one or two centrally located nuclei. So, dia punya nukleus akan tengah-tengah uh, sel. Tapi kadang-kadang dia tengah-tengah atas, tengah-tengah bawah. Okay, it is more or less centrally located. Each cell will have one or two. It will have striations of light and dark bands. So, ini pun akan berbelang. Okay, function of cardiac muscle since it's in your heart is for contraction of the heart. You can find cardiac muscle in the wall of your heart by the way you have maybe heard this somewhere else before but cardiac muscles are myotonic so if you grow the cardiac muscles on a petri dish in the lab or if say for example somebody is brain dead so much um what do you call brain dead uh, somebody who's brain isn't working anymore they're not conscious they're just in a coma but their body is functioning happily uh functioning properly and you sign them up for organ donation you take the heart out of somebody and you just hold it in your hand the heart will generate its own heartbeat and keep beating as long as it has enough nutrients and oxygen to stay alive Basically, so yeah, so that is a fun fact you may or may not have already heard about before. Now I'm going to move on with this and draw a cardiac muscle with you. So we're going to start with cylinder shape. Remember to draw the intercalated disc and draw one or two nucleus per cell. And then I'm of course going to draw more. This one I drew uh, three more, three or six more branches, and. Put in the nucleus, the intercalated disc, and also the striations. Here's one I am labeling the nucleus and labeling the intercalated discs. Okay, so of course you can go through the notes again and think about the three types of muscles and compare between them. You can compare them in terms of their structure, number of nucleus, presence of intercalated disc, whether or not it has striations whether or not it is branched okay they're branched ka unbranched bercabang atau tidak where is the nucleus inside the cell is it central is it peripheral or some i don't know anywhere other other options uh, but i think it's just central and peripheral whether it controls voluntary or involuntary action and where it can be found so please have a look at this diagram uh this table when you can and you can even do your own comparison if you want to give yourself a challenge. Okay, so that is the end of it for this subtopic. Uh, make sure you do your own notes on animal tissues for muscle cells and take time to compare between them. And we will go over this again in the next tutorial. That's all for me. Thank you very much and see you again soon.
bye